Okay, so this is a high yield question for rheumatology, immunology, checking off the box on some very important points for USMLE. I'll be as concise as I can possibly be, not make this a 37 minute clip, okay? 21 year old woman, increasingly sore hands. This could be a million different differentials. Uh, physical exam shows no abnormalities. She works in office. She manages her pain with ibuprofen and NSAID. Uh, now this is the first significant sentence. She has type 1 diabetes mellitus and was hospitalized three years ago for an episode of pericarditis. Why this matters, when you see a sentence like this in a US Millie vignette, what the question is attempting to communicate is that autoimmune diseases go together. So the fact that she has type 1 diabetes mellitus and autoimmune disease means that she has greater propensity for other autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, pernicious anemia. Hashimoto thyroiditis, okay? So autoimmune diseases go together. Now, type 1 diabetes mellitus and rheumatoid arthritis are both HLA DR3. I want to make a point that when you are reading questions, do not make rigid HLA associations, okay? It doesn't really work like that. I think you should keep a loose framework of just autoimmune diseases go together. I've seen all sorts of variations across NBME questions. You can't pigeonhole things. But when I wrote this question, yes, I had that in mind that type 1 diabetes mellitus and rheumatoid arthritis are both HLA DR3. She had an episode of pericarditis. Why is that important? Pericarditis can be a manifestation of, of autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. Okay, so I made a previous question with pericarditis and RA. So that's, an, that's a point that I'm inculcating. It's not an accident. She doesn't drink or smoke. Sometimes smoking can precipitate autoimmune flares. Uh, full blood count shows no abnormalities, which means she doesn't have anemia of chronic disease. Um, she doesn't have low platelets, which can sometimes be seen in lupus. You can get uh, antibodies against hematologic cell lines in lupus, also against your white blood cells and red blood cells. But the point is, we can't make any conclusions, uh, any type of uh, inferences based on the having a normal full blood count. X-ray of the hands is shown and is completely normal. Okay, so why did I do this? Because it's not mandatory that you have an abnormal hand x-ray and rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, she's 21. She's young. Maybe in seven years, she'll have bout de deformities, swan neck deformities, ulnar deviation, maybe. But right now, just normal hand x-ray. Okay. It's not uh, mandatory for diagnosis. So we continue reading. She's got positive antibody titers against citrullinated proteins. Uh, so citrulline is an amino acid and Anti-CCP, anti-cyclic anti citrullinated peptide, is the most specific and sensitive antibody in rheumatoid arthritis, more specific and sensitive than rheumatoid factor. Now, if she has anti-CCP positivity, we know the diagnosis is rheumatoid arthritis. So this question is asking, well, what other antibody would we see in this patient, potentially? And we know rheumatoid factor is the other high yield one. So we say, well, what is rheumatoid factor? Rheumatoid factor, this is super high yield, is an IgM antibody targeted against the FC region of IgG. Sounds really weird. Why is it IgM? No fucking idea, okay? But it's an IgM antibody targeted against the FC region of IgG. So the answer here is simply immunoglobulin. That's the target, okay? So we're just going to look at some of the other answer choices. Once again, this could be a long discussion. I'm going to try to keep this concise. Anticentromere refers to limited scleroderma, Crest syndrome, so calcinosis, Raynaud phenomenon, esophageal dysmotility, sclerodactyly, telangiectasia. So, but that's limited scleroderma. If we had renal phenomena, a re renal, you know, that could be uh, diffuse scleroderma, which would be anti SCL70 or topoisomerase 1. Pulmonary findings like fibrosis can be seen in many autoimmune diseases like RA causing rheumatoid lung, Crest syndrome, both uh, limited and diffuse, but the renal would be diffuse scleroderma. But this centromere antibody would be a limited scleroderma Crest syndrome. Anti double stranded DNA, that's of course our systemic lupus erythematosus, okay, and um, this will go up in acute flares, and it also will reflect renal prognosis. Should be noted that in lupus, uh, anti-Smith antibody uh, is more specific than anti-double-stranded DNA. Anti-histone antibody is drug-induced lupus erythematosus, uh, which would be seen in 
drugs such as I came up with a really stupid mnemonic. Mom is hip. So minocycline is mom. Uh, is is nothing. So HIP, HIPP, so hydralazine, isoniazid, procainamide, penicillamine. Okay, not penicillin, penicillamine. A copper chelating agent for Wilson. So those drugs classically cause uh, antihistone antibodies, drug-induced lupus, okay? Uh, Malar rash is classically systemic lupus erythematosus, and you get renal phenomena in SLE. In drug-induced uh, lupus erythematosus, antihistone antibodies, renal uh, manifestations and uh, Malar rash, actually rare. More chest uh, symptomatology, uh, pericarditis, uh, mediastinitis, pleuritis, and also... Um, erythema nodosum, that's in drug-induced lupus. HLA-B27, you don't have antibodies against HLA-B27 in PAIR, P-A-I-R, refers to like seronegative spondylarthropathies, uh, but also like psori PAIR, P-A-R, psoriasis, ankylosing spondylitis, okay, uh, seronegative spondylarthropathies, IBD, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, so Crohn, ulcerative colitis, R, reactive arthritis, formerly Ryder syndrome. So that's HLA-B27. Uh, HLA-B27 is never diagnostic. That's an important point. So if you get like a psoriasis question or IBD question, and you're like, oh yeah, that, that could be HLA-B27 positive, you would never order an HLA-B27 in order to diagnose. It could be merely uh, corroborating uh, or suggestive of a diagnosis, but it's never diagnostic in and of itself. That's an important point. Uh, once again, our answer, immunoglobulin, is the correct answer for rheumatoid factor, an IgM antibody against the FC region of IgG. U1 ribonucleoprotein, that's just for mixed connective tissue disease. As the name implies, uh, mixed connective tissue disease can have signs from different autoimmune diseases, such as systemic lupus erythematosus, scleroderma, and polymyositis, okay? Uh, I have not actually seen a question on uh mixed connective mixed connective tissue disease where they give you a vignette and you're supposed to know it's the diagnosis and then choose you one RNP. I have not seen that type of question. What the US assembly might do is tell you U1 RNP is positive, similar to what I did here for anti-CCP. They might say U1 RNP is positive, and then they give you a mixed picture of different autoimmune diseases like polymyositis, scleroderma. Uh, and lupus, and then the answer would merely just be mixed connective tissue disease of the diagnosis, okay? So a lot we can talk about here once again. Uh, this is just rheumatoid arthritis, and your take-home point is that uh, anti-CCP, anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide, is the most specific and sensitive antibody in the condition, more so than rheumatoid factor. And then U.S. Simile really, really wants you to know that uh, rheumatoid factor is an IgM antibody, against the FC region of IgG, okay? So I'll obviously make more content. If you liked this question, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.